Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So when you think about Nerf series, there's probably three that come to mind. Endstrike, Elite, and Rival, which is pretty interesting because Rival has kind of dwindled over the years and unfortunately has become a series that has just become mediocre at best and subpar to terrible at worst with very few good blasters. But I remember back when Rival first came out, it was one of the best series imaginable. It was like a dream come true for the people who wanted to be part of the hobbyist market but weren't ready to take that first step. And the launch of Rival was incredibly weird. It took two years to get the full launch across. And in those two years, there were four blasters released. The Apollo, which was received exceptionally well. The Zeus, which was received pretty okay. The Chaos, which was received magnificently. And the Atlas, which was not received well at all. How did this thing fail? I don't know, let's find out. So first of all, in case you're wondering what this thing is or you aren't familiar with this blaster, this is the Rival Shotgun. This was the definitive Rival Shotgun when Rival was coming out, and honestly, it is one of the coolest shotgun concepts I think Nerf has ever made, but we'll get into all that later. Let's start out with the design. Eh, yeah, it's kind of aged like milk. At the same time, though, I think that this blaster looks just fine for a rival blaster. I think it is one of the most kind of elegant, rival-esque looking rival blaster. You look at this, you know for a fact it's a rival blaster. There is no mistaking it. It looks like a rival blaster, and I honestly think it looks pretty cool. 90% of the details are completely useless and have nothing to do with the blaster themselves, but honestly, it doesn't really hurt the blaster's cosmetics. On top of that, the sort of racing stripe-esque foregrip and sort of like target shooting style of main grip really do it justice and in case you're thinking really quick that the double shotgun mechanism has to do with both of these you are gravely mistaken this is just cosmetic both of the shots come out of here which is kind of disappointing but don't worry we'll get into that in a little bit we got to talk about ergonomics this grip is so so good i don't know why because all things considered, this blaster has a very over-detailed grip, which means that it should be uncomfortable, but it's not. It is big, comfortable, and rounded. It is the perfect size for something like this. It's got a nice finger troil just for your middle finger. Your other two fingers have their own finger troil itself, like down here, look at that. That is comfortable. This is a well-made grip, and the trigger is very nice. It feels good to put your finger on this trigger, and the trigger pull itself is super snappy. As for the pump grip, oh my gosh, it's so good. I can't believe how nice this blaster feels in the hand, and just so you know, it's made out of stuff. This blaster's got some heft to it and none of it feels useless. All of the weight this blaster has feels like it needs to be there, which is great. This blaster doesn't feel like it's bigger than it needs to be. It doesn't feel like it wastes space like a lot of other blasters on the market right about now. And I just adore this priming handle way too much. How does this thing work? Well, as you can see, it's, it's got a jam door. It's really big. And the reason for that is because of the way this thing works. So here's how it works. You have a magazine. You should put the 12 round mags in every single time. That'll give you six shots. You put the magazine in the back and slide it forwards into the top of the blaster. You know, like an actual shotgun that does take magazines. I don't know of any shotguns that take magazines, but if they did, this is probably how they'd work. You pull it back, you push it forward, it's single shot. Damn, it's got a lot of power to it and it sounds like it. I gotta tell y'all right now, this Prime feels beautiful. It is right up there next to the Twin Shock. No, you know what? This is better than the Twin Shock. This feels better than the Twin Shock and it isn't any heavier than a standard Elite Blaster. How is that possible? Plastic gear racks. Yeah, it's, it's a rough cut style, which means Modding this is a titanic pain in the ass! At the same time though, I don't really want to modify this anyway just because like it's a good short range shotgun in my opinion, but we'll get to that later. I think the prime of this feels way better than it has any reason to feel. It is buttery smooth going back and forth and it's got a very satisfying ratcheting mechanism on the inside that makes you feel every ounce of power this thing has to offer. The way that it works 
is really weird. Get this, get this. Here, let me let me load a magazine really quick. So here's what it does, all right? When you pull it back, that thing goes up like an elevator and allows two rival rounds to go in. Then it lowers back down and pushes both of the rival rounds into the breach, which means that when you pull the trigger, two shots come out. That is the only two-shot rival shotgun that has ever been released. There is not a single other rival blaster that has come out since the Atlas that fires multiple projectiles at once intentionally. Sure, you can do shotgun loads and stuff with things like the Saturn, but this one is bespoke and designed to shoot two rival rounds at once, which makes this thing absolutely awesome. Oh, but it has issues, and that is what I'm gonna get into here. People have complained about jams with this blaster, but I haven't found very many jams. More so if you don't pull the priming handle all the way back and you push it forward not hard enough, it sometimes gets stuck, like a rival round and a half will get in and then it won't want to move the elevator back down or something like that. Sometimes the rival rounds will get stuck above the elevator and it'll get like sandwiched up here so you won't be able to prime the blaster all the way back. It's a little bit annoying to fix and it happens like once every two or so, 200 or so shots. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but it did happen every now and then. No, the issues don't have anything to do with that. It is loading and unloading magazines. It is as bad as the Nerf Elite 2.0 Turbine. Don't believe me? Watch this. <sighs> yeah, I don't know why, but this thing really does not like having magazines put in or taken out of it and it it actually becomes quite an issue after a while because you end up having to reload a lot because the maximum ammo capacity for this is 12 rounds or six shots let's just go to the firing demo leroy jenkins prepare to meet your maker Boom, stop. So the Nerf Rival Atlas, a blaster that has been scrutinized since it came out. This literally was like one of the worst blasters of 2016 when it came out. I actually kind of like it. It's better than a lot of the stuff that's been coming out nowadays. I mean, obviously there's exceptions like the double punch and the moto blitz, but seriously, Nerf has still been declining over the years. This was a bad blaster back in 2016, and the only real problem it has is the occasional jam every now and then, and putting up with magazines, which I seriously feel like is something that I will eventually get used to, someday. But honestly, this blaster isn't nearly as bad as people have made it out to be. At least this one isn't. The blaster itself is actually pretty fun. I really enjoy using it. It is a very fun, cool blaster to play around with, just to blink with, to shoot shotguns off, shotgun shots off with, without having to worry about like doing the double load mechanism thing that you have to put up with with every other rival shotgun loading blaster. This one just does it automatically, which makes it super unique and fun and cool. Even with the occasional jams and the little issues it has with the magazine, I'd say that it's worth it just for the emotional response of using this thing at all. It is a very, very cool blaster, and it really sucks that Hasbro never like did an updated version of it like they did with the, the Helios and the Hera and the Prometheus and stuff like that. This blaster was just kind of left in the dust, which is sad because I, I genuinely really like it a lot. And I feel like this blaster has so much potential if they were to re-release it and like recreate it the same way that they did with the Helios and the Hera. I think this thing would be baller recreated, even though just as it is right now, the grip is comfortable, the fork grip is nice, the prime is smooth, the functionality is reliable, it looks cool, and it works better than it reasonably has any right to, considering how complicated and fiddly the mechanism is. I would link it in the description, but yeah, retired blaster, I'll see what I can find, but I can't guarantee there's going to be anything in the description. With that said, thanks for watching. Bye!